California's gold is produced in association with KCET Los Angeles and is seen statewide on California public television. This series is endorsed by the California Teachers Association, the California School Boards Association, and the California Library Association. Moon over the mountains, and what a beautiful sight it is. Hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser. Welcome to Death Valley, this huge national park, over 3.3 million acres, where the temperature gets up to over 130 degrees in the summertime, and they have an annual rainfall rate of less than two inches. That's not very much rain. But this year, along with a lot of other places in California, because of the heavy rains we've had, Death Valley has been transformed into a springtime wonderland. A wonderland that has attracted hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people from all over the world to see it for themselves. That's why we're here. We're gonna spend two days in Death Valley to see firsthand how this place, because of the rains, has been transformed not only into a springtime wonderland, but a fine example of California's gold. Well, we're just six miles out of Baker, but we've already made our first stop. First off, just look at this with the blue sky and the big puffy white clouds and this just amazing view as far as you can see. And yet we are just a few miles off the 15 freeway and we're already in another world. But what we wanted to take a closer look at over here was this. Now we had heard that there was a lot of water out here this year, but look at this. A friend of mine in LA had alerted me to this to be sure and look for it. He said this is called Silver Dry Lake. Nothing dry about it these days. Supposedly in January and February there was so much rain out here that that lake is now over 40 inches deep. It's the terminus of the Mojave River and all this water has flown down out of the San Bernardino Mountains and formed this huge lake, the Silver Dry Lake. And just seeing this much water out here in the middle of the desert and knowing that all of this has accumulated because of the rains we have had this winter, it's just a beautiful sight to behold. If this is any indication of the beauty and the kinds of surprises that await us deeper into Death Valley, well actually we hadn't even gotten to Death Valley yet, if this is any indication of what lies ahead, we are in for a truly spectacular adventure. And here comes a helicopter overhead. Before we left the lake, we, we noticed the two of y'all had driven over here. Introduce yourself. I'm Rusty Austin. This is my son, David. Hi, Hi. where are you all from? We live in Culver City, California. Wow, so did you come out here to see all of this? Had you heard about it and wanted to see it for yourself? Well, yeah, David read about it in the LA Times that bad water in Death Valley was like completely underwater, and so we loaded up our blow-up kayak and out we came. Now that's what we want to do. That's it, where we're heading. We're heading, heading for Badwater. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. It's, you went kayaking on Badwater. Yep. Went out of 200, 300 feet. I mean, you could stand up in the water. It was, it's just four feet, maybe. Not even four feet. It's Not like two feet. feet. But look at this. Come I know. on. This is, is it, is Badwater better than this? Um, no, Badwater, no. nothing. This is like the ocean. Badwater was smooth and it might have been 18 inches deep. We went out about 400 feet, maybe. And Did you see wildflowers? Tons of wildflowers. Millions of wildflowers. So we should be excited about what, what's Absolutely. getting ready to happen to us. Absolutely. The wildflowers are beautiful. Yellow, purple, white, everywhere. Now look at this. There's the sign right out there. Speed limit, 20 miles an hour. 
Was this a road all the way through here? What do you I think? I believe that it was. We saw this when we drove out to Death Valley yesterday. We saw this and we didn't get the picture. So coming back, I said, we got to stop and take this picture on the way back. This is like the ocean coming it in here. It looks like the ocean, doesn't it? Look at this. So this is an amazing year in Death Valley. Oh, it really it? is. Uh, totally amazing. Have you been out here before? I've driven through here a lot of times on the way back and forth from Las Vegas, and I have never seen anything like this ever. Yeah. So it's, it was a worthwhile trip for us on the weekend. And whose idea was it to go kayaking at Badwater? That was my idea. <laughs> I saw, I read about it in the LA Times, and I figured that would be awesome. I mean, how many people get to say that they've kayaked in Death Valley? Well, it may only happen once well, in our lifetime. That's what I said. They said it was a once in a century storm. Yeah. And that's you your see, daughter out there? That's my daughter-in-law. Wow, look at her out there. Don't fall in. <laughs> Not on the peninsula, I guess. <laughs> wow, this is, this is really an amazing sight to see and to hear. Look out here at this water and these waves. Yes. It's, it's like nothing I've ever seen before, and I, I probably won't see it again in my lifetime either. We hated to leave Silver Dry Lake, which was so beautiful and strange out there in the middle of the desert. But we were just starting our adventure. There were still lots to see. Amazing sights like huge rocky mountains that were covered in green. That's something you never see in Death Valley. And then, of course, the wide open spaces, the vistas that take your breath away. We are never going to get there if we keep stopping like this, but this is our first honest-to-goodness Death Valley wildflower sighting. And for those of you who know about such things, I'm sure you'll recognize what this is. I don't know, and I don't have a book to look it up, and we're not going to be hooking up with the ranger until tomorrow. Uh, we're going to get the official wildflower tour tomorrow, but we just had to stop and look at these beautiful yellow flowers just kind of hanging here on the side of Highway 147, blowing in the afternoon sun. It's just, they're just absolutely, look, here's some white ones up here, the same kind, and they go all the way down the side of this little cut in the road. So here they are, our first wildflowers in juxtaposition to this beautiful, beautiful open vista out here on this spectacular first day of spring, 2005. Now when you're driving in Death Valley, there's literally something new to see at every turn. And needless to say, you don't usually see many people. This spring, however, things were a little different. For example, the small desert community of Shoshone was packed with visitors, both going into and out of the park. We've met an honest-to-goodness Shoshone local. Your name is? George Ross, I always says. Nice to meet you, sir. You've lived here all your life. Yes, sir. Well, tell us about these wildflowers. When was the last time they were this beautiful? The last time was uh, 1974 when it rained a whole month. I was down in La Puente then, but still I was up here. Yeah. I was just back and forth. So that's been over 30 years ago. Yes, it has. Doesn't happen very often, does it? No, it don't. And when it does happen, you're used to all these people swarming in like we are to take a look at them. Well, this is the worst I've seen it. Oh, the worst? <laughs> you mean the best? <laughs> the best. <laughs> When you visit Death Valley, you better like driving because there's a huge distance between point A and point B. And as we reached the end of our first day, our main objective was just finding a place to spend the night. Well, this whole trip was kind of spur of the moment, so we didn't have a chance to make any reservations, and everything is totally booked up in Death Valley itself at the Furnace Creek Inn and all the other facilities. So we have had to drive quite a few miles out of our way to a place called State Line, Nevada, which literally is right on the border of between Nevada and California, 
And this is the entire town of State Line right here. We're going to be spending the night in the Long Street Casino, which I think is figuratively and literally the only game in town. The only question that remains to be answered is what is that big cow doing here? I have a feeling it's going to be a long night in State Line. Actually, the night was fairly uneventful, slept like a log, and next morning started off bright and early. We were heading into the park, which in itself ended up being quite an adventure. Okay, we have reached the barricade, but the people at the park service have told us that we can go around the barricade get back on 190 and we're gonna hook up with them about 12 miles down the road to be escorted into Death Valley and one thing we don't have to worry about this morning is any traffic on 190 because basically this road is closed and has been closed for months now because of the rains. We got a clear shot into Death Valley. Okay, we've come about six miles and now we've come across some actual road, whoa, construction. You can see over here to the right where all of this must have washed out when the floods came down. That was months ago. Oh, and they're still working on this road. Boy, I sure hope my shocks hold up. Okay, now we're coming on to some serious work here. I think this is where we actually have to stop and wait for an escort to take us into the park. This is as far as we can go right now. We have hooked up with civilization here. You're the first person we've seen, Terry, since we got on Highway 190, but you're here to meet us and make sure we get into Death Valley okay. Tell us about this road and exactly what happened to it. Okay, actually, you have to go back to August in fact, August 15th of 2004, and you figure, my gosh, that was months ago, and it really was. But at that time, the park experienced one of the heaviest thunderstorms it has seen in decades. And unfortunately, where we're standing is in what's called Furnace Creek Wash. It's one of the major drainages that feed into Death Valley. Right down through all of this here. So all of this would have just totally washed out. Actually, yeah, what, the road itself in here, you notice, is, is in pretty good shape, but a lot of what you're seeing out here is freshly rebuilt uh, dikes that were wiped out during that flood. And so far, where you have driven up to this point, you've seen very little damage. Around the corner, that's when the bulk of this flood took off and really started ripping out highway all the way down to Furnace Creek. It's about 12 miles. So this caught everybody here off guard, didn't it? Well, it did. I mean, I mean we this saw... doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Storms like this actually do happen in the summer fairly frequently, but to this magnitude, very rare. So this was a summer storm in August. This wasn't the rain that California got in January and February. Exactly, exactly. See, I don't think most people make that connection. No, in fact, a lot of folks are surprised. Well, what do you mean it's the road is closed? And say, so, well, is this because of the floods in January? No, go back to August. And so there's a whole education element we have to let folks realize just how much damage occurred. So what's gonna happen here this morning? We're gonna be escorted, what? How do we get into Death Valley? Well, right now, uh, what you're experiencing is uh, a pilot car system 
for employees during the construction period. They really want to limit traffic because of the amount of heavy equipment going on trying to rebuild this highway. So we're going in with the employees. We're going to follow the van that takes the employees in. Exactly. And they've got a pilot car system set up to take us through during the day, Monday through Fridays. Otherwise, like any other visitor, if we want to leave Death Valley or come into Death Valley any other time, we have to go the long way around. Wow. Well, thank you very much for meeting us here. This is going to be, welcome. are we going to see a lot of uh, destruction as we go in and construction? Well, no. actually, believe it or not, you're going to see mostly construction. The destruction part has already been kind of demolished and they're putting a new roadbed in. So a lot of the devastation you would have seen if you were here in August has already been taken care of, but now they're, they're rebuilding a road. So that's what you're going to be seeing. When's this going to open up? They're looking at the end of April of this year. So it's finally getting there. It's taken a long time. So by the time this hits the air, this road will have already opened back up to the general public and none too soon. That's correct. And there's going to be a lot of happy people. <laughs> okay, we're on the road. We are following the pilot car that's ahead of us. They're taking us into Death Valley. And look at this first vista we have come upon as we've come around the bend here. This is absolutely spectacular. Oh boy, look. We got to go around. It's hard to imagine what this must have been like with all of this water rushing through here, coming down here out of the mountains. It must have been a torrent of water to wash out this whole area. Look at this. This was all washed out. This is a major rebuilding effort. Look over here to the left. There's the road over there. All of this is having to be rebuilt. There is not one piece of asphalt left down here where the road used to be. This is absolutely amazing just to, I know we might be spending too much time talking about this, but when you're driving through it, you are just overwhelmed at what must have happened right here back in August of 2004. Look, you can see over here on the left where the water just cut right through this whole area here. Look at this. Okay, there's the Furnace Creek Inn, and Terry, I gotta tell you, driving through all of that destruction, where did all that water go? That must have been a huge river of water. It was, well, it was really hard to tell because it all happened at night, but it had to have been massive. The one thing that a lot of folks don't realize is that this wash, when, this is where it ends. So once it reached this area, it's wide open. And right so the, down here. Literally, the water just flushed its way across the fan and dumped all its debris, which included everything from rocks, dirt, automobiles, pieces of pipe that it ripped out of our water and sewer systems. That is amazing, and it just dumped it. Is that why there's so much water at Badwater? Is that where that water came from? Believe it or not, it's not. Uh, this water just soaks right into this alluvial fan and never reached probably Badwater at all. The water you're going to see later on with the bad water is mostly the rains that came in December, January, and February. Okay, we are leaving you here, Terry. Thanks for getting us, well, at welcome. least getting us here. <laughs> now we're going to head 
down how far to Badwater. I can see the edge of it right, right. there. You're going to be coming to the intersection here shortly, and then you're just going to take a left. You're going to go 17 miles, and you can't miss Badwater. It's a, it's a gorgeous little spot right now with, of course, all that water out there. Don't be surprised if you see some sunbathers on the, on the beach. You're kidding. That's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's possible in Death Valley. That's right. Thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, we are now sharing the road with some cyclists. We are on the way to Badwater. We have pulled off to the side of the road on our way to Badwater because we spotted you over here doing some artwork. Your name is? John Klippenstein. From? Santa Barbara, California. All right, now what <laughs> brings you out here? The wildflowers, springtime, what is it? Yeah, the wildflowers especially because uh, you know, it only happens once in a while. I guess this is the hundred year bloom. Yeah. And um, I come out here once in a while, but I wanted to, you know, paint it. Because you know what, I mean? what you've shown here with these colors are the colors you see when you look out there. There's just kind of a bed of yellow out there, yeah. isn't it? Usually it's uh, pretty much earth colors, but this time, you know, you get the yellows and the greens. How You're long have you been simple. out here? Uh, third day. Really? Yeah. It's kind of hard to leave, isn't it? Yeah, it sure <laughs> is. It sure is. Back on the road again. Now we are seeing for the first time a sea of yellow wildflowers. Look at this. I hope the camera can pick it up, but as far as you can see, both sides of the road, we're talking lots of wildflowers, yellow wildflowers, right here by Badwater. This is absolutely spectacular and highly unusual. Okay, we are finally here. We have reached Badwater and we're hooking up with Ranger Charlie Callaghan. Welcome. You are the park naturalist. I am one of several park naturalists here. And we have been hearing about this lake, Badwater Lake, for a long time and we're finally standing here looking at it. Well, you're actually looking at Lake Manly. Badwater is just behind us here. Badwater is a permanent pool of water. But Lake Manly, the ancient lake that disappeared 10,000 years ago, only reconstitutes two or three times a decade. And this is the deepest I've ever seen it. Look at as far as the eye can go, we are seeing the bottom of Badwater Basin full of water. And now you said two or three times a decade. Two or three times a decade, we get water here, but not this deep. I mean, this is a record amount of rain this year, therefore a record amount of water in the bottom of Death Valley. So you have never seen this before here at Death Valley? In my 15 years, I've never seen this much water here. No now, way. what caused this? Were these the rains in January and February? It's the rains in November, December, January, and February because the Amargosa River has been flowing in the southern end almost permanently through that time, and we're the bottom of the basin, and the water has nowhere else to go, and it begins to fill up Death Valley. It must be two or three feet deep out there. Now, it's late March now. We're a little bit late getting here. Was this lake much bigger before we got here? Just a little bit bigger. It's starting to evaporate. You know, by June or July, it will be gone. We will see nothing but salt out there by the middle of the summer. You're kidding. It's going to be totally gone, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so this has got to be a, a, a huge surprise for people when they turn the bend and look out and see this huge lake in the middle of Death Valley. It's a shock. Most people have never seen that. They're expecting the salt flats. They're not expecting what is temporarily one of the larger lakes in the state of California. So I'm sure that you're doing all of the measurements. You're doing all of the photography. You are making sure that this is well documented for future generations to see, right? I wish we were doing more than we are, but we are. We're, we're actually getting out there ourselves. We've had a chance to get out in canoes and kayaks for the first time. I've been here 15 years. I'd never been on the water before out there as a treat, and, and it's going to be fun going out today. Yeah, because that's what we're here for. We want to go kayaking in Death Valley, which in itself has kind of a strange sound to it, doesn't it? Kayaking in Death Valley. 
Oh, it does. We had folks here a month ago talking to our maintenance folks, and they got on the radio and said, we've got some guys that want a canoe out here. Is that okay? Okay? And we're like, yeah, as long as they don't have a motor, it's wilderness out there. So if they've got oars, they can do it. Have you had a lot of people come out here to do that? More than I ever would have realized. We've got people actually calling up on the phone and saying, I hear you can kayak on Death Valley. We're coming out to do it. This is an unusual thing. So while they're looking at wildflowers, they're also taking opportunities to kayak on the lake. All right. That's what we want to start off the morning doing. We're, they're the kayaks right out there. We're just going to cut across here, a short walk, go yeah. down there, and go out on, and the name of the lake? Lake Manly. Lake Manly. I bet a lot of people call it Badwater Lake, don't they? Well, they, they may, but we'll correct them. We'll get them on to, to Lake Manly, which, you know, if we would have been here 10,000 years ago, there would have been water 600 feet deep. That water has disappeared a long time ago, but Death Valley used to be wetter. So things change here. It may be the hottest, driest now, but it's not always been that way. So there would have been a lake 600 feet deep right here. We'd be underwater right here. There was a lake 600 feet deep between 10 and 150,000 years ago. And now obviously it is technically a dry lake. It's a dry lake 99% of the time. Less than 1% of the time do we ever see water here. We are at the edge of Lake Manly, and Charlie, these views here, you're not used to seeing reflections like this out here, are you? No way, it's so expansive. The water extends so far, and to see the reflection of Telescope Peak, the highest point in Death Valley, I mean, think of it, 11,300 feet above us there. Where can, can you get that in this country? That's Telescope Peak over there. Right over there, the highest point in Death Valley. And the lowest point in the continental United States is somewhere out there underwater. Somewhere underwater, I mean, minus 282. Lowest point in the U.S., lowest point in the Western Hemisphere. Here. All right, I'm taking off my shoes because I want to see what this, what is this going to feel like walking out in it? Salty. Saltier than the ocean, saltier than the Great Salt Lake. It's saturated with salts. We haven't exactly measured it, but it's about as salty as you can get. So this is saltier than the Great Salt Lake. Oh, definitely. I mean, if, if it wasn't so shallow, people would be out here floating in it. Wow. Well, it feels just like water, though. Wait till you get out and see the salt on you. <laughs> and it, uh, it's kind of, it's not cold, it's not warm, it's just kind of water. Yeah, dip your finger in it and, and, and taste it. Just dip your finger a little bit. Taste, taste, it. taste it, taste it. That is salty water. <laughs> Much Whoa! More, much more than you'd have a case of the runs, but... Uh, wow, that is really salty water. Yeah. Have you had people out here trying to float in this stuff? Two or three. We've had them out here just to see if they could do it. You've probably had all kinds of people out here trying to do all kinds of things taking advantage of this situation, haven't you? Oh, two weeks ago, we had a guy down here with a kite board, and he used it. He was zipping across the lake with the wind blowing. He said he came here because he wanted to be the first one ever to kite board Death Valley, and as far as I know, he was. How did people find out about this? Was it just, it was in the newspaper, It, it was wasn't in it? the news. I mean, even yesterday, they had it on the Weather Channel, and somebody was calling me on the phone. Hey, I saw a picture of kayaks in Death Valley. Can we do that? And I said, hey, the water's still here. You can do it if you want to. It's a golden opportunity how often do you see water in the bottom of Death Valley all right we've got our kayaks right here I don't know whether I should put I should leave my shoes here I'm shouldn't take I mine off I, I, because I, I had heard that this water once it gets on your clothes can just eat right through them. It's, it's so salty, it's just too salty, and it's going to end up destroying anything if you let it stay on it too long. I'm gonna rinse off my clothes later on. Boy, I gotta tell you, that taste of that salt is still in my mouth. <laughs> that is really salty I water. I didn't tell you to gulp it, I said. <laughs> so, how, wait a minute, let's, do you, have you tried to quantify just how much salt is out there? You know, nobody really has. I'm sure if we got the right person with the right number and statistics and measured the, the exact diameter of the lake, and we know an estimate of the depth. I've had nobody really measure how many gallons of water or how much salt, but uh, 
suffice to say there's a lot of it out here. And this salt has always been here, hasn't it? It's, it's always, well, always is an awful large saying. It, it's been building up through the millennia, through the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, because we're in the bottom of a basin. So geologically, the water has nowhere to go when it ends up here. It brings in the salts and it, the water evaporates, leaving the salt behind. If that water were to flow to the ocean, that's why we have salty oceans, the water eroding out of the mountains. Wow, it's this whole place, this whole thing is actually so surreal in a way. Well, to be in the hottest, driest spot in the country and to have a lake out here that happens so seldom and to have as much water as we have, that's, that's amazing to me. You know, I have a feeling also that I'm gonna be carrying some of this salt with me for days, maybe weeks after I leave Death Valley. Now we expect you to brush this salt off. We don't allow you to collect oh, any salt Oh, that's right, here. you can't take anything <laughs> with you can't take out of a national park. But, but in this case, you know, the few particles that end up, that can be your souvenir <laughs> of Death Valley. Oh, wow, you really are up high. Look at that, you're floating. <laughs> She's floating. <laughs> Give us a wave. You could probably wave with both hands. And my feet. And her feet. <laughs> 15 oh, years, she's the first one I've seen floating out here. 15 years in Death Valley. What'd you say? I say 15 years in Death Valley, and she's the first one I've seen floating out here. Wow. That's great. Look at this. Not that anybody couldn't do it, but I warned her all this salt isn't going to be great for the swimsuit, yeah, but she can have that as a collector's item. <laughs> What's left of it. Yeah. And there's another guy out here. Look at how far he's walked out, out into the middle of the lake, but it's still only two and a half feet deep or so as far as he is now out how there. How far do you think he's planning on going? Well, he's still going forward. I don't think he'll cross the valley, but you know, the surface is, is fairly hard out there. So it's a little gushy, but not too bad. The, the mud isn't too bad out there. So uh, as I, I don't imagine he'll go out much further, but what a joy. He's got the peace and quiet, the solitude out there. He's got it to himself. You're going to wait in? Yeah, I'm going to try. <laughs> did Charlie talk you into going in? He did. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go in. Okay. Hey, and we got our first out. little baby visit. Yes, this is his first time here. This is Jack. <laughs> wow, so you wanted him to see this as well. Definitely. Yeah, it's Come on, amazing. let's all walk out here together. Yeah. There she is. How does it feel? Yeah. Where are you from? Shaver Lake. That's up near Fresno. 50 miles east of Fresno. All right, so Shaver Lake is nothing like this, no, is it? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Wow, this is great. Here comes our little baby. Look at this. Oh, wow. What do you think? He's like, oh, my feet in here. <laughs> this is a lot of water. Yeah. Right. He's yeah. part of history. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> Look at him kicking. He wants to go in. <laughs> He's ready to swim. Here we go. This will be your first experience with swim lessons in yeah. Death Valley. Water. You know, there's <laughs> such a positive feel out here, isn't there? No, everybody everybody is, is enjoying. out here having a good time. The kids are enjoying it. The youngest ones, he's getting excited here, ready to enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's just, everybody's here for the right reasons. Definitely for the right reasons. We're the hottest, driest spot, but here we have a unique opportunity with a lake in the bottom of Death Valley, surrounded by wildflowers on the hillsides. What a treat. Yeah. You glad you came? Oh, yes. I'm very happy we're here. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to get in. <laughs> it's warm enough. Okay, we're making history. The youngest child ever to put its feet in the lowest lake in the country. In the United States. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Look at that smile. I think we got a smile there. Sure. What do you think? Now that's history right there. Good job, buddy. That is history. What did we say? Eight months? Is that Eight what? Months. Eight months. All right. And he's already been initiated. That's right. <laughs> You've been christened. Okay, history is being made. <laughs> this is amazing. And I bet this even gets you excited, doesn't it? An oh, old it hand does. at this. 15 years here and it's only the second time I've ever been on this water. It is amazing.
Wow. And you know, when you're out here, this lake looks so big. Oh, it's an optical illusion. It looks at, like it goes as far as you can see in the distance to the north because it's so low, so level out here. Let's cut around just a little bit. How deep is this lake? Probably at the deepest point, two and a half, maybe three feet, right where we're at, a couple of feet deep. So it's really not a deep lake. No, this is my type of lake. This is something, just the sense of being out here surrounded by these huge mountains and being out here on water. On water, in the bottom of Death Valley. What are all these specks on the top of the water? It's actually salt. We're seeing salt particles coming up to the top and it's already beginning to dissolve into the salts as the water evaporates. So, so these are salts on the top of the surface. And how thick is this salt gonna be on the lake bed when the lake bed, when the lake dries up? Oh, it'll be a good six inches to two feet deep probably. Really, just pure salt? Pure salt. Look at your hands. We're already covered in They're white. white. They're white. So are my knees, <laughs> so are my feet. <laughs> This salt has a way of sneaking up on you. It does, it does. What are the most uh, commonly asked questions? Well, you know, people ask about salt ducks. You've heard about salt ducks, haven't you? Salt ducks? Salt ducks. Because what happens out here in the saturated water, if waterfowl, if do ducks make the mistake of landing here, it's too salty. I'm gonna move away from you here. Yeah, we don't wanna have Push a collision out in the middle of the lake. So if ducks land out here, it's so salty that the salt wicks up in their feathers. They're stranded here, they can't fly out. When the water evaporates, we've got a dead duck out here and the salt just forms around it and you have what's called a salt duck. We have seen them out here. We have photographs in our files of salt ducks that were left preserved, you know, that's what they used to use to preserve meat in the old days with salt, and they were well preserved. Just because the ducks have so much salt on their wings, they can't fly. There's too much weight, and they can't fly off the lake. All right, what else do people ask you? Well, they want to know if anything's living out here. Well, obviously, there are no fish. There's no fish. It's so lake temporary. Manly. Like right here, I've got a little bug I'm picking up. Oh, I thought I was picking it up. It landed out here. I'm not sure what it is. He's not very happy, but if he sticks in the water, he's probably not gonna survive. Because he'll get uh, salt. Too much salt for him. Clogged on his wings clogged too. Clogged on his wings. He's landed in the water. There's, well, let's put him on the boat. Maybe he can dry out. And what about animals that come here thinking this is fresh water and They're try to drink do very this? Good. I mean, think of it, right next to us here, bad water. It was named by an early surveyor who came by tried to get his mules to drink the water, and they refused, and he put it on the map as bad water, and it's been called bad water ever since. And we're in Badwater Basin, or Lake Manly, now that there's water in it. Wow. And the mountain's towering so high, and of course, everything in Death Valley, the rocks have been tilted and uplifted for the last few million years. You know, you get the sense that you're on an ancient lake when you're out here, don't you? You do. I mean, if you know what to look for, you can even see the shorelines up high on the ridges, up to 600 feet high, where that old lake stayed for maybe thousands of years at a time before the water started lowering. And isn't it interesting how things have a way of coming back? Oh, it is. And what if it stays wet. What if year after year it gets wetter in Death Valley? Who knows? Maybe sometime within our lifetime we'll see a permanent lake. I wouldn't bet any money on that. Well, you don't know. This could be the beginning of a, of a whole new weather cycle. It could be. We, we don't know. That's the, the fascinating thing about the weather. I mean, we try to predict it, but we really don't know. Well, let's just sit here for a minute and take it all in because this is absolutely spectacular. This is one of those moments, one of those times and places that you'll carry with you and remember for your whole life. Out here in the middle 
of this amazing lake in Death Valley. To be honest with you, it was really hard to leave that lake. But we got back on the road and headed to another section in the park because we had even more spectacular sights to see. Okay, we're pulling into the Furnace Creek area here. You can see all the RVs over to the left, all the traffic. You got cars parked over here on the right. This place is jammed full of people here to do the exact same thing we're here to do. Look at the water and the wildflowers. And remember, this is a Monday after a weekend that was two or three times this busy. In fact, they say this past weekend was the busiest weekend on record in Death Valley. As we continue our Death Valley adventure, we have now come about 20 miles north of Badwater. And Charlie, this is, this is what people are coming here to see. And I got to tell you, when you see them in this context, I think that's what makes them so overwhelming. Well, putting on this unbelievable show, I mean, thick, thick fields of desert gold, and yet we've had people come into the visitor center and say, is there anything but the yellow flowers? And we say, park the vehicle, get out, walk, look closer, look for the belly flowers, and you will find variety. But these showy desert gold are certainly what draws people attention first. And this is something that's not usually here. I mean, usually there's nothing like this, right? On a normal visit here, someone would just see the hillside with rocks and it would be pretty unimpressive. There would be, there's not even any plants living here. These seeds staying dormant for years, in, in dry years, maybe even a decade in this case certainly since 1998 when we had a good rain and I find this interesting too because when you look down at the soil you're talking about something that doesn't look too conducive to growing anything here this is just rock and hard earth here rock hard earth we're in the hottest, driest spot in the country. Think of the summers. Think of the summers with 120 degree temperatures, and yet those seeds laying dormant, those seeds surviving through that hot period, waiting for the rains. And look at the belly flowers here. Look at you. Oh. Look at in between. Look at these beautiful desert stars. I see the pink of the Nama here. So just a few of the belly flowers here, right in amongst the tall desert gold. Little treasures hidden among the gold out here. See, you got to know what you're looking for when you, when you look for wildflowers in Death Valley, don't you? You've got to take the time to slow down and look for them. You know, we, we ask people, hey, buy the color brochure. It's only a dollar. Pick up the free list of what flowers are being seen. And then you can decipher what you find out here. It's more than just beauty. There's plants down uh, by Golden Canyon, the gold carpet that hasn't been seen for a few years. We're not going to be able to see all of them today. These are the ones, aren't these the ones that we've seen as we were driving in the park and they were on both sides of the road going both to Badwater? Of, these are the most common ones. These are the great fields of flowers that are people are coming to see. The desert gold, it's a sunflower. They're pointing towards the sun. They'll actually track the sun like a sunflower does. Wow, this is, you know, this is magical just walking out here amongst these. Surrounded. We're so used to looking at these in a, in a big picture, in the big picture out in the big field, but looking at it up close, explain to me what we're seeing here, Charlie. We're looking the head of a sunflower, the desert gold here. We're seeing the petals. They have a beautiful, beautiful scent. But when we look at these, we have to think about how they get pollinated. And we may not see the bees out here during the day, but we're going to have moths out here during the night pollinating. I can see some bees out in the field here. So there are pollinators here in Death Valley pollinating these wildflowers. And eventually, of course, we're going to have the seeds form 
and that's what's going to produce the next generation of flowers sometime down the road. Wow, this is so there's a whole story here going on with bees and Definitely. And, and insects and and think of it with all these plants that's going to help produce food for the for the animals for the reptiles for the small animals it's going to go right up the food chain this is going to produce an abundance all the way up to the bighorn sheep and the juxtaposition i think a lot of it has to do with the colors these of the rock real. and the the way the sun plays off the the colors here, it's, well, and, it's so dramatic. There's two types of blooms going on here, Hugh. There's the bloom of the flowers, and then you'll notice the salt bloom on the rocks. So after that rain penetrated the rocks, the salt followed it to the surface, and we have a bloom of salt, or mineral salts, on the surface of these mustard hills here, and then the desert gold blooming in the foreground. You call those salt bloom? A salt bloom, because when we don't have the rain here, and after we've had dust storms and stuff, there wouldn't be any salt on those hills. Only right after the rain will you end up seeing all that salt out there. See, I think I've got a salt bloom right here on my leg. That's what you get for wading out in Lake Manly. That's a salt bloom right there. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to know there, where to look. There, where to look. There you go. And this is interesting, too, because we're looking out this juxtaposition. There's another salt flat. Another Not salt here. flats, we see the historic Harmony Borax work, some of the old buildings in front of us. Think of it, 120 years ago, there were Chinese laborers out in the middle of Death Valley gathering salt, and they were processing the borax ore out of it. We see the ruins right up here, visitors showing the ruins. Oh, another belly flower. Yeah. There's another belly flower right down there. The little Nama. Oh, beautiful. Now, Pink. how long will these last? These flowers are not going to last that long. It is getting hot. We'll see them last another couple of weeks. By mid-April, as it starts to turn hot, as it gets 95, 100 degrees, these are going to wilt. They're going to spread their seeds, waiting for that next good rain. Boy, this is, you know, you really wandering through it. You hate to see it go away. But, but maybe know, that's what makes it so wonderful is that it's here for such a short time and so sporadic. If it happened every year, we wouldn't be so excited. But to happen as few times as it does and to have the record rains, to, to me, it, record rains mean record wildflowers. And we're seeing an unprecedented bloom in Death Valley. This is postcard material, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and we have every, people from all over the country coming here to get their own photographs. They don't want to just buy a postcard. They want to make their own photographs. They want to take home their own memories. Now, here's the routine when you come to Death Valley in the springtime. All of the roads are clogged with people driving around looking for the flowers. Then every once in a while, people will pull off to the side and go out into the fields, like this family has done, to take pictures. Howdy. How are you, sir? The guy's got his camera locked and loaded. Have you got some good stuff today? Oh, man, I'm telling you, I got pictures you wouldn't believe. Now, what do you mean I wouldn't believe? Well, I'm telling you, I got one of a little tulip that only blooms once every 100 years. Yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous. You know, if you can't get a good picture in Death Valley, Today. <laughs> you're, just, you're, you're really poor, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> you sure everything was set right? You're not going to get home and find out you had the wrong setting. No, I put it on automatic. <laughs> <laughs> Hold that camera up. Let's take a look at it. Locked and loaded. Now, Locked what were you loaded. doing out here? Let's walk out here. How uh -huh. do you, when you, when you come up on a field like this, look at this. Is this How do you even what? decide what you're going to do? It's tough. You you know, I'm thinking, oh, those flowers in the foreground and panorama. Oh, there's just so many things. Now, how did you all get here to the middle of this field of flowers? What brought you here? Well, we flowers. saw it on the news and the flowers and friends that he was born and raised up here. He's 75. I saw him. He said there's flowers blooming in places that hasn't bloomed in 50 plus years. Yeah. It's just phenomenal. So really, you're part of history. You feel like yeah. you're part of history. Well, I'm originally from Pennsylvania, so this is like a total different world from what you see back there. Well, we're in the middle of Death Valley. Yeah, we're below sea level. As people continue to pour into Death Valley, Charlie has brought us to yet another field of flowers. And Charlie, this one is really magnificent because it goes back up and over 
over the hills, it's almost hill. as far as the eye can see. We see the desert gold, but we're finding more variety out here. Yeah, you brought us to this one because now I would have walked right past this one. Well, but many this is one do. of your favorites. Well, it is because it, it, it's classic Death Valley, hottest, driest spot. Watch out for the spider there. We got a little fella. Look at how he blends in. But where's the spider? Right here. Oh back. my gosh! I never Look would have that. even seen Look that spider. That. He's got oh, a little web there. Wow. But this, on the gravel alluvial fans, this is the gravel ghost. These ghostly white flowers towering above the other flowers. It seems like almost invisible white flower. You know, the flowers are visible, but the stem is almost invisible as they hover here above everything else. The gravel ghost gravel ghost up on our gravel alluvial fans isn't that amazing wow you know there is so much we have just scraped the surface even as far as wildflowers are concerned how many different wildflowers are blooming in death valley this spring oh i'm sure there's hundreds of them but an average visitor will be lucky if they see 50 or 75 but different more, different different species yeah and we have a, more than 100 on our list right now. I was lucky enough last week to go out for an eight hour day and saw over 60 species, so it's possible. Well, you know, now on this little tour you've given us, we've just seen three or four. But I know. that's okay, because it's still, I think, unless you are a hardcore wildflower lover, just to see this means that you're gonna go home happy. Oh, definitely. And, and for those folks, we're doing two wildflower walks a day. We've got one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and we're having 50, 75, 100 people showing up on those walks. Yeah. So there's great demand. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. All right, you all are just out here walking amongst all, all of the flowers. All of the flowers. flowers. Aren't they gorgeous? Absolutely. I've never seen them in my lifetime, and I'm 84 years old, for God's sake. Let's stand over here. here for years. Let's stand over here so we can be right in the middle of them. Oh, they are gorgeous. Yeah. They are beautiful. Did you have any idea that they were going to be no, this beautiful? No, no. We came because it was. this is a 100-year bloom. Yeah. And we wanted to see it. And the contrast there, well, I got just this little camera, but still. It's going to be gorgeous. Yeah. It's beautiful. And Absolutely you're kind of overwhelmed beautiful. by it as well. Oh, I've been overwhelmed all my life from this desert. Yeah. I love this desert country. And it always surprises you, doesn't Every it? Every time you come up there, there's something different, no matter how many times you've come here. Well, now, you've probably been to this exact spot all your life and never seen this. Never oh, seen never. this. Never. Well, it is late afternoon, the sun is setting in the west, and we are preparing to leave Death Valley. And what a wonderful two days we have had here. It's really hard to describe the emotions you feel when you experience something like this firsthand. Not only being able to actually kayak out on a lake in Death Valley, but to See sights like this with the afternoon sun hitting these beautiful desert gold wildflowers and looking up at the mountains. It is just spectacular. We are so blessed to live in a place in a country that has national parks like that. And this spring with its rains has truly brought us a wondrous sight to behold. And I am just so glad that I've had the opportunity to be here for a couple of days and share this with all of you at home. This is truly what California's gold is all about. It doesn't get any prettier and more magnificent than this.
Well, hello, everybody. I'm Huell Hauser, and I sure hope you enjoyed our visit to Death Valley in the springtime. It was truly a spectacular experience. And if you'd like to see it again, share it with family or friends, or keep a copy for your home library. It's available on video cassette and on DVD. All you have to do is call 1 800 266 5727 and we'll be glad to send it to you right away.